In this video, we're going to handle our player falling off the screen and then having to respawn. So just like with everything else on the background, if we attach it to the camera, it's just going to follow the camera. So what we can do is create a new object here. And I'm just going to call this Killbox. You can name yours whatever you want, but I usually use the name Killbox. And all we want to do is add a box collider 2D. And now we want to edit the collider and we're going to make it under the camera. So I'm going to create it somewhere around here and we want it pretty big so it covers the whole area. And it's only outside of the camera. So the way this is going to work, if we run the game now, if we fall off the screen, we're going to fall on that collider. And if you look, we're actually sitting on it because it's a collider, not a trigger. So what we want to happen is we want to make this a trigger. And then if we hit it, we can tell our player that he died. So let's check is trigger. And now let's go into our player controller. And before we do that, we're actually going to need to make this kill box a trigger, which it already is with a tag. So I'm going to create a new tag. So now remember, we already used the player tag that came built in. So this time we're just going to create our own. So we just hit the plus sign. I'm going to call it kill box. Now this can be named whatever you want it to be. But remember, it's case sensitive. So copy it and then we'll save. So we need to use that in our code. Now let's select the kill box object again and we assign the tag here now. So now that's going to let us go into our player controller. Now we've already used on collision enter 2D a bunch of times, but now we're going to use on trigger enter 2D. So this works almost the exact same way, except it's a trigger and we go into it instead of collide with it. So now in here, we need to do the same. We need to check for the tag. So I'm just going to copy this line here just so we don't have to retype it all. And instead of checking for player, I'm going to check for kill box. So now if we hit that, we can just debug out player has died. So let's open the console. Let's fall off the edge. And now we have player has died. So right now we're debugging that out, but we're not actually doing anything. So let's make it so if that happens, we set the player to be not active. And the way we do that is we use game object, which is this game object. So that's the player dot set active false. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take our player game object and it's going to remove this check right here to disable the object. So it still exists and it's still in the scene, but it's not active. So let's run this code. Okay, and now we see this check is gone. So this means nothing on this object is running anymore, including the script. So everything in the script will pause. But I want to demonstrate this quickly here. So if we go down, so our player is technically right here, but they're disabled. But they're not deleted. So if we move the player up here and we reticked it, the player is right back and we can control them and everything. So that's essentially what we're going to do to respawn the player is we're not going to actually destroy and delete the player. We're just going to disable them so they're not active, move them to the spawn point and then turn it back on. Now, in order to do that, we're actually going to need another object. Like I said, when this object is disabled, that means this player script does not run anymore. So if we disable the player, we can't tell it to respawn in the same script. So this is where we're going to need something that's called a game manager. In this video, we're going to carry on and make a game manager for our game. So as we talked about in the last video, we're going to use this to control how to spawn our player. 
Since this is going to handle spawning the player after they die, we might as well make it also spawn them at the start of the game, so we don't need a player right in our scene. So before we start doing that, let's make sure we applied any changes we made to the player to the prefab using the overrides. So select your player, let's go to overrides. And in this case, I did forget to save some, so I want to hit apply all. Now I can just select the player and delete it out of the scene. Now this is going to make our game more modular that we don't have to manually put in a player every time we make a level and things like that. It's just going to automatically handle it for us. So let's go into the hierarchy. You can right click to create it, but like I mentioned previously, a good shortcut is control shift N to make an empty object. I'm going to call this game manager. Now reset the transform. Next, I'm going to make a script on the game manager that's going to handle everything for us. Let's just clean up our project folder a bit here. So I'm just going to drag these scripts into the scripts folder. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this physics materials. I'll put in the physics material. And if you have this universal render pipeline one, which you should if you selected URP for the type, we can just drag that into the settings folder. We don't need that in here on the main level. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the scripts folder. I'm gonna right click in here, create new C Sharp script. And I'm gonna call this game manager. Now one thing you're gonna notice, it's gonna have this cog or gear icon for it. This is because making a game manager script is so common in Unity for your games that they automatically change the icon. So it's very descriptive and you can see it right away. It doesn't operate any different than any other script though. So now I'm just gonna select the game manager and I'm just gonna drag the script onto it here. Oh, and it actually added two of them. So I'm just gonna click the menu here and I'm just gonna remove this one. We only need one game manager. Okay, now I'm gonna go to prefabs and I'm gonna prefab this as well. So then if we wanna put our game manager in other scenes, we have it here. Okay, now let's open the script. And the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna get it to start spawning our player when we start the game. So to do that, we're gonna need a few things. First thing, we're gonna need a serialized field of a game object. And I'm just gonna call this player prefab. So we're gonna add that player in. Let's go do that right now. So let's select game manager. So I selected the game manager. I'm going to go to the prefabs folder. And I'm going to drag in our player. Now the next thing we need is we need to know the position where we want to spawn it. So I'm going to make another serialized field. This one, I don't need the whole game object. I just need to know its position. So I'm going to make this one of type transform. And I'm going to call this spawn position transform. So this is a little redundant. I just want to be very clear with our naming so you know what they are. So we don't necessarily need to put this much in because we're going to have to also add dot position onto this later. So it makes it a little redundant. If you're comfortable understanding what these variables are at this point, you, you can rename them whatever you think is more appropriate. I'm going to keep it like this just so it's very clear what it is as you're learning. So let's go back to Unity. And now we need to know what the spawn position is. So this one, we could make a child of the game manager and take it with us as part of the prefab. For right now, I'm not going to do that because we need to decide how we're going to structure the game later once we start making checkpoints. So for now, I'm just going to create a new empty object here. So again, Control Shift N or you can right click and create empty. And I'm gonna call this player spawn position. Now let's reset the transform. And now let's select W or the move tool here, whichever way you wanna do it. And now we see our object is right here. Okay, so we have the position here. So I'm gonna make the player start over here. So I'm just going to put this transform somewhere in this position here. So these values is where we're going to spawn our player at. This way we can just drag and drop it anywhere we want in the scene. 
Now, if we go to our game manager, we have to tell it what position to use. So let's just drag this in. Now, at the start of our game, when this runs, we want to spawn our player. So we've used instantiate before. We need to give it the game object. So we want the player prefab. We need to get it a position so we can use spawn position transform dot position. And then we need to give it a rotation. And we talked about we can use quaternion dot identity, which means no rotation. So now this should spawn our player when we start our game. So let's go test this out. Notice we have no player in our hierarchy at all. Now, if we start the game, our player pops in. Now it's not in the right spot. And this is because our, our pivot points aren't aligned. So for this, we don't really have to worry about that too much at this point. We can just move this up. And because our player has physics, it's going to drop down. Okay, so our player spawned, but we're getting an error and our game's not playing. So let's take a look at the error. Let's go to the console. And it says the variable player of camera controller has not been assigned. So now this is causing an error that we broke. So if we look back at our main camera in our camera controller script, notice we dragged in that player reference manually earlier. So now that we deleted the player from the, the game, this doesn't exist anymore. So since our main camera doesn't know how to find this player, we're going to use our game manager for this as well. But we're going to do that in an upcoming video. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the camera controller script. And this is just going to disable the script so it doesn't run. So we don't get this error. Now our camera is not going to follow the player right now because of this, but it lets us troubleshoot. So let's run the game now. And now our player spawns in. So everything else is going to work except for our camera. Now, if we fall off the screen, notice it's going to disable our player again, but it still doesn't do anything. So at this point, we're going to want to respawn the player at the original spawn point. Now in our player controller, this is what happens when our player dies or it hits the, the kill box when it falls off the screen. So instead of setting it to be disabled right now, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to go back to the game manager. I'm going to remove update because I don't need to actually do anything in update here. And what I want to do is make another method in here. I'm going to make it type void and I'm just going to call it player died. That way we can handle everything that happens when the player dies in one spot here. So right now, all we want to do is spawn the player again. So we could copy this line and put it in here. Now, as you can see, this is very repetitive as it's the exact same thing. So let's get in the habit of let's make that into a method. So I'm going to make a method of type return type void. I'm going to call this spawn player. Now I'm going to cut this line of code here and put it in. And then I'll delete this line too. And now all we have to do is we can put spawn player. And then I can also put spawn player here. So then instead of having to type this code more than once. And as we progress in the game, we're going to do more than one thing when we spawn the player. Now we don't have to repeatedly type it out over and over again. So we have this set up, but we have to call this method when the player dies. And with the way we have it set up right now, the game manager has no idea if the player dies or not, and it shouldn't. We need to tell the player to tell the game manager. So this is where it comes in, where we do want to make something public. So I talked about before how we only want to make stuff public when we absolutely need to. And if we don't need to, we could use this serialized field variable. Now making something public allows it to be accessed from another script. So if we want to call this player died method from the player controller, we have to tell it to be public. So just like this. Now inside player controller, I'm going to show you something here that you haven't seen yet. 
And this is how we can find a game object in our game based on its type. So the game manager in this case. We can do find object of type. And then we can use the angle brackets. And then we put in the type here. So we, in this case, we want to type game manager. And then we put our brackets. So this line is going to search through our hierarchy in the game. So if we go back to Unity, it's going to look through every game object in here, and it's going to look for one that has a component on it of type game manager. And that's this script right here. Now this is only going to return the first one. So we need to make sure we only have one game manager in our scene. But what happens here is once we have the first one, we can access those methods on it. So just like in this example here where we use gizmos.drawSphere, drawSphere is a public method on the gizmos class. So we can do dot player died. Now what's gonna happen is once the player hits that trigger and it does this check that we saw we hit the kill box, it's gonna search for a game manager and tell it to run player died. So let's go test out this code and this should work. Every time we fall off, we should respawn back up here. There we are. There we are. And now I spawn again. Okay, so now we have a simple player respawn system as well as the player will spawn when we start our game. I'll see you in the next video.